Welcome back, everyone, to Calls with the Wizard, and I am your host, Tony A., I guess, the Wizard. Anyways, I want to thank everybody who tuned in, everybody who liked, comment, subscribed, everybody who shared, everybody who even disliked. It doesn't matter. You guys are still watching, so I truly appreciate all you guys. Uh, before I introduce my very special guest, I just got some minor announcements I want to make. Uh, I just did an interview with uh, JR and the crew, uh, JR and the crew show. Uh, definitely go check that out. They're a new podcast, I believe. Uh, but they've been, uh, um, I did a, like about an hour interview and I dropped some, some things on there that I think it would be, uh, very, not only educational to the music industry side of you guys, that those of you guys that are into the, the music industry and also some things that many of you guys have been wanting to hear from me. I think it's interesting for you guys to definitely go and check that out. Uh, I've always said that, you know, I'll answer anything, call in, invite me. I've always... Uh, uh, encourage other podcasts to invite me. You can ask me anything you want. And this guy took the initiative and actually asked asked me whatever he wanted, and I answered it. So at the very end of the show, we'll go ahead and put the flyer so that you guys can go to uh, that YouTube page and see that interview with Jr. and the crew show. I think it, uh, it was actually pretty good. So other than that, um, uh, I forgot who we just had here. Who do we just have here, Norbert? 
Oh, yeah. Uh, we have Smoking with the Wizard with Chris the Glove Taylor. Definitely go check that out. We just had so much stuff. Uh, we just had news of Norby's, and then this Friday we'll be back with Freaky Tales, etc. And eventually a conversation with Marvelous once again. But for those of you guys that have been asking me today, is Marvelous going to be here? Not only is my special guest here, but Marvelous is here, and he will be joining us when we open up the phone lines, okay? So now I want to be very specific. If there's something that I leave out that I don't ask my guest, be sure to call in and ask. That's why we call it Calls with the Wizard, so that you guys can call in and ask your own questions. Either your own questions or things that possibly I didn't ask. So without further ado, let me just go ahead and jump right into it with Dr. David Sanchez. How are you, sir? Very good. Good. You know, it's been a while since you've been here. Your, the date of your last visit was July 6, 2022. 2022 and you're back uh not only to educate us but also because you have a new book yes i do okay and you know what before we get into that um uh, can we give a quick recap because some people may be wondering like who is this guy you know uh if you guys want to get a little in-depth uh, um background of him go back to rhodium radio episode 264 episode 264 actually at that time we didn't even take calls we just spoke so definitely check that out but tonight we're going to give people opportunity to ask the ask them whatever you know maybe i didn't ask you so david if you can kind of just give us a quick recap uh where were you born you you know just give us a little bit of what we touched on last time if you can remember sure well first of all thank you uh, tony for inviting me uh, I was I grew up uh, in South Central Los Angeles. So I was born at the California Hospital downtown Los Angeles. Yes. And uh, just growing up, uh, everything, all the all my mentors, you know, just just pushed me to go on to higher education and and also to uh, one foot in higher education and one foot in the community, uh, fighting for La Raza and uh, educating people, advancing thoughts and preparing minds for the future and also organizing uh, so we can have some voice in our community. And we've been probably the most successful uh, group, the Brown Brain National Party, uh, which I founded back in 1967. 1967, and it's still going on. Still going on. Yes, let me give a shout out to Santos. I met him uh, and he told me that he was also a Brown Beret. So you know what? Uh, um, uh, me and him, uh, we talked earlier this week. We're going to be doing a little filming on something. So I just wanted to give him a shout out. Um, so now, for people that may be wondering why did this Brown Beret, if you will, start? What, what, what was it that motivated you or inspired you to start this? Well, when I was growing up, uh, t around 12 years old, when I was 12, I was crushed, uh, crushed by the system. And... Uh, there was a roving pass, a gang, roving gang, uh -huh. passing through the streets, not from our neighborhood, and, and uh, just looking for any Chicano, and, and I got beat up by a gang. Uh, at that point, my life was crushed, and uh, I, I uh, was in pain for several months after that beating. Wow. And, and was this just something, I, and I know we kind of touched on it a little bit last time well, we actually went a little bit more in depth but since we're giving a, a recap i may ask you some of the same questions in the very beginning just so people can kind of play catch up of who you are and what you went through um was this just a random beating did they just see you and just say well it was they were having uh fights over at jefferson high school and and uh they just were, came in you know looking for a chicano to beat up because uh they were losing the fight at jefferson Right. Okay. Now, I, I, as I look at your brown beret, I see La Causa, uh, the the cause. Okay. What, what what is that cause? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, the cause is uh, uh, we have been fighting for the cause for many years, and we will continue to fight. It's not over till it's over, and uh, because there's nobody out there fighting for our community, nobody yes. fighting for the Mexican Americans and Chicanos, and that's why we're so weak. I mean, there are 50 million of us, and yet our community is so weak because we continuously are sabotaged uh, by the rulers and the controllers of society. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say the rulers and the controllers, who, who, can we be a little specific of who, who may that be? Well, the politicians, for one. <laughs> the true. courts, the jails, the prisons. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, 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 today, do we have a voice? Not much of a voice because we don't have any representatives. We don't have Chicanos running for office. We need Chicanos to be in office who represent our grievances. And we have nobody addressing our grievances. And uh, the only group out there right now that I know of is the Brown Bray National Party, which I, I've been head of that group for many years. And the reason why is because, uh, you know, if there's nobody speaking for us, the, the movement goes dead. And we have to keep the movement alive and we have to keep moving the people. Well, well, why do you think, you know, do, do you believe in your eyes that the Brown Beret uh, uh, should have been bigger than what it is right now? Or is it, have you reached your goal as far as like this is what, it, what we're set out to do? We accomplished that. What is the vision? We have accomplished many, many, many victories. Uh, for example, last November, we were able to get the gas prices to go down. I remember that. Yeah, the Brown Berets we were demonstrating at the gas stations. Uh, nobody else in the country was demonstrating against the high gas prices. Uh, the note went to the president of the United States. The note went to the governor of the United States. And they were pressured to, to bring down the prices, and the Brown Berets did that. Uh, that's just one, one of the victories. We've done many victories, the school walkouts. Uh, the moratoriums, uh, the, the invasion of Catalina Island, uh, the marches, and uh, also publishing books and getting the word out. Now, now, when you say school walkouts, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Because growing up, I did witness a lot of the school walkouts. But when you're, you're a youngster, 11, 12 years old, and people say walk out, we just walk out. And many of those of us youngsters didn't really know what we were walking out for. Well... Even today, I mean, we have academic dictatorship. We have academic tyranny uh, where many of the students are literally terrorized uh, and forced into learning stuff that they don't need to learn. I mean, a lot of trivial knowledge, and, and if they don't go along with the program, they get pushed out or kicked out of school. Uh, there's a lot of tyranny in education, and also the educators are not the best either. Now, now when you say, you know, that they're being taught this in school uh what is it that they're being taught that is it false histories you know or can you kind of shed a little bit of light on that on what you mean by that well when i say academic dictatorship the the, the uh, all our schools public schools are state schools mm -hmm. run by the state uh the orders come from sacramento the state uh orders the, the state schools the public schools to do a particular curriculum but many, in many cases, those curriculums do not work for us. In many cases, they work against us. It's almost become like a big brother. Education is like a big brother. You know, if you're not part of that party, you know, just like Russia, if you're not part of the party, you don't get a job. Same thing goes here. If you're not part of that education party, you don't get a job. Yeah. Now, earlier you had mentioned that we need more Rasa or to to in in office. Okay more politicians, you know, uh, we would have a stronger voice. But what I've seen, and I'm, I'm not speaking for everyone, I'm speaking for myself, but from what I've seen, that many of them get in there, of these politicians, and then they just become crooked, just like all of them. Over and over, this, this occurs simply because the people that do get elected to office are not from the barrio, they're not from the community, they're not from the Chicano roots, they're not from the Chicano culture, uh, and they, they do not know Chicano studies. And to not know Chicano studies is like the blind leading the blind. And these politicians are the, are the blind leading the blind. Not just the politicians, the, but the, the people in high offices, the managers, the controllers, the rulers, uh, the heads of the departments. Uh, it's, it's all control. We live in a total control society. Uh, for example, if you go to study psychology at, Cal at one of the California State Universities, what does that mean? You study psychology, it means putting, putting everybody, you're studying to, to put everybody on medications. Very true. You know, if you take police science, you're studying to put everybody in jail. You know, if you're taking sociology, you're studying to, to put people away and even take, take children away from, from the families. So you see that the education system is the ruling uh, class. Uh, or the police state in, our, in, in, uh, in, the, in California, not just California, but the Southwest. Right. And it's even worse in Texas. And they, they, what they have created is a mass uh, chaos. And by this mass uh, psychosis that they put us in, this is why so many people are going insane, because there's just too much pressure on the young. You know, um, so, so 
not too long ago, we had um, the teachers uh, from LA USD honor the strike of the workers. When I say the workers, the people that work the cafeteria, people that drive the buses for, for these schools, for LA Unified School District, okay? I have family that uh, works for LA Unified School District. Now, there was a lot of people hitting me up saying, oh, the teachers want to walk out because they have no, they want more money. The teachers are being greedy. But let me say this, and I say this on behalf of my family members, that right now, teachers don't even have a, uh, a contract. They don't even have a, so they're actually working and teaching right now without a contract, okay? All they did was honor these, uh, uh, if you will, uh, these workers. So they finally got what, they, what these, these workers finally got what they wanted, okay, which was a raise, and they hadn't gotten a raise in years. I said all that to say this. At the same time, people were saying that these teachers are, teach, are teaching kids these homosexuality books, these homosexuality laws, these homosexuality this. So I went back and I asked my family. I said, hey, you know what? How do I answer this person? And he goes, it doesn't come from us. And first of all, we don't teach it. But if it were to come, it would have come from the district. So what they need to do is to go hit up the district. Not just the district, from the state. Okay. The state politicians, they control the schools. The assemblymen, the state senators, they control the schools. Okay. And they say nothing. They say nothing about the total terrorism or the total control in our schools. The, they say nothing about the academic dictatorship. Uh, in which they have all of the teachers are in fear of saying what they want to say in the classroom. Even though, even if they are opposed uh, to, to some of the gender studies or some of the things that you talked about, uh, they cannot because they're in fear of the state, the big brother, the state. So, so Dr. David Sanchez, now I ask you, what can we do as, as a Rasa to change things like that? Well, the problem is there's not enough organizations to, to, to plug into. Uh, I, I give some information out there. Uh, and uh, right now, the only group that's out there that's fighting for the Rasa is the Brown Brain National Party. They're, they're, you go to East LA, there's no more Chicano groups in East Los Angeles. Yeah. You go to most parts of, of even uh, of California, you won't find Chicano groups anymore when there were many. And what happened was many of those groups were eliminated. The Chicago movement, for example, was bludgeoned to death, literally bludgeoned to death and removed and isolated because of the controllers wanting to uh, re take recontrol of the state for the ruling class. Now, when you say obliterated, can you kind of give us an example? Isolated. Yeah, yeah. Who, who, who was out there that, that can, can you name names of some of these groups that were taken out? Oh, the Brown Braves were taken out for a while. Okay. Uh, you had MAPA, the Mexican American Political Association, they were taken out. Uh, and several other organizations uh, were taking out. Nonetheless, the thing is that if they do not have roots uh, in the barrio, uh, if they do not have an understanding of the Chicano paradigm, uh, they do not know what they're doing. Once again, we get, we get leaders coming out blindly in the blind because they do not know Chicano studies. They do not know the Chicano paradigm. They do not know the, the, the history of the Chicano. We've been fighting since 1848. Ever since the, United, the Southwest became a, the part of the United States, we've been fighting for, for our rights. And a lot of people come here from other countries, you know, Mexico and other countries. They don't know that we've been fighting for 100 years. You know, they don't know that we, that, that, that we have a theoretical uh, framework of history that shows that we have been successful and that we have won many victories by having organizations like the Brown Brain National Party. Where can someone go? Let's just say someone is barely tuning in right now and says, you know what, this sounds interesting. I've never heard of Dr. David Sanchez, but I, I, I do want to uh, find a little bit more info. Where could someone go to educate themselves on this? I mean, let's just say other than your books, because we're going to get into that. But where can someone go? Is there courses today that people can take where they can educate themselves? There are a lot of Chicano Studies courses, and we need everybody to get into those courses. We need everybody to start taking Chicano Studies. Uh, even though sometimes it might be a little cosmopolitan, uh, but at least they'll give you the framework of history. Okay. And okay. that's important. Okay, earlier, uh, my friend Daniel Marvelous was saying that you were like one of the last guys, you know, because uh, you still write books. You still believe in education, and you're still learning yourself. Okay. Like you say, never stop learning. Okay. David, one day when you're no longer here, where will Rasa end up if we don't educate ourselves 50 years from now? 
where would we be at? Still with no voice? Well, you have to understand that when the movement was strong, uh, we had a culture to fall back on. Uh, we had Chicanismo. Mm -hmm. We had we had Carnalismo. Uh, we had Chicano Brotherhood and Chicano Sisterhood. Uh, and we had unity. And the Chicano, the word Chicano, was the glue of unity. And we lost that. And that's what's been under attack for so many years. The word Chicano has been under attack. Even Chicano studies has been under attack. Right now they're trying to make Chicano studies into uh, ethnic studies. Uh, at LACC, they made Chicano studies into uh, uh, American cultures. At California State University, uh, other non-Chicanos took over the Chicano Studies Department. And so what do you get? You get the watered-down Chicano Studies or, or, the, uh, or the Chicano Studies that doesn't really relate to our community. Recently, and I want to say recently, I want to say maybe like the middle of last year, I caught wind of something that I wasn't quite sure what it was, and maybe you could fill us in if you are familiar with it. They started calling Latinos uh, Latin X. Are you familiar with that? Yes. C can you kind of sh on what well, you know? just another form of, of sabotage? Okay. You know, they want to put X on everything. They want to put Chicano X, and that, that's part of that sabotage. That state that state system uh, to water down uh, Chicano studies. Now, let me explain something to you real quick, please. We are the largest body, you know. I mean. I mean, when you have the largest body, you know, uh, you go with the biggest body because that's that's the one, only one that can take on the system. Yes. We're 50 million strong. And yet all these other groups are turning away our, 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 our fabric. And the way they terrorize our fabric and destroy our fabric is they get us to look at other issues. Uh, they get us to look at, like gender stuff. They try, they try to get us to look at... Uh, you know, call us, calling ourselves Latinos, yeah. you know, and when we are actually 90% of the Latino population in the United States, the Chicano, Mexican Americans, 90% of the population, we have a power, we have a power base, but everybody, especially the politicians, are trying to destroy us every single day. And is it because they, they know that the, that the day that we wake up, we would take over? Is that what, is that, is that what it is? And we would take over the political base. Yes. Yes. And everything would change. Um, do you ever see that happening? Yes. Good. I see it happening, and I see the Chicano coming back. Uh, before, back in 1992, uh, I had a high position. I was uh, supervisor's deputy. I was for uh, Yvonne Burke, uh, county mm -hmm. supervisor. I was supervisor's deputy. I was making well over $50,000 a year. And all I worked on was reducing the violence in the 90s and... and uh, but it also gave me the change, the, the money I needed to, to, to get the Brown Braves reorganized. Right. And uh, being in a high position, realizing that in government, that, that you know, the county supervisor controls the, the jails, they control the hospitals, they control the courts. And that's where the power is at, in government. Wow. Wow. Okay. I just got so many questions. Well, the, the thing is, you have to understand that the, in 1992, the Chicano movement was dying out. The Chicano trend was dying out. And for it to allow it to die out, there would be no more Chicanos. There would be no Chicano in existence. You, you know, when you say that, you know, it began to die out. I'm trying to understand that. Is that just people just getting tired and saying, you know, pretty much this isn't going nowhere. Why, why am I still fighting? You have to understand that Chicago studies is, is constantly being sabotaged. Uh, all teachers in the, in the United States are walking on eggshells. Yes, they're very under, true. They're under a big boss. Yes. They're under a, a big stick, you know, wants to knock them out of, knock, knock, knock them out of the classroom. And that's why I continue to study and write books to continue the education, the Chicano education. What, what, what is it that gives you this drive, this passion that, for, for you to continue to? Because you could have easily, David, you could have easily have said, you know what? Our people ain't listening. You know, why do I still need to do this? You know what? I could just sit home, relax, retire, enjoy the rest of my days. What, what, is, it, what is that drive that keeps you going for our people? I think it, understanding that 
lives are at stake all the time. Yes. Uh, so many lives are being lost every day. Uh, in Los Angeles County, we have a you know, su- Chicano suicide every day. Uh, we have a Chicano getting murdered every day. We never hear about that. Yeah. Well, we don't hear about it, but it happens. Mm-hmm. We hear a little bit about it, but not too much. Uh, we hear about the gringos and all the people that are dying from fentanyl. We hear about that we on the news all the time. Th- that's what's trending. Yeah, but we don't hear about the Chicanos getting getting killed or the Chicanos uh, uh, getting sent to, to uh, being railroaded to prison. I can't even tell you how many homeboys of mine that I grew up with are just after doing 20 years, 25 years. Uh, I mean, uh, they just continuously uh, using us for, for uh to make money for their prisons. And even in Texas, it's even worse. And in Texas, they have, uh, there's plenty of Chicanos in Texas, but one out of eight men go to prison in Texas. You know? So what's the number for us here in California? It's probably one out of 20 men go to prison. So we're still talking about, hey, you know, something's wrong with this, 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 this vacuum, this uh, psychosis, this madness, uh, which creates delusions, uh, pressuring people, making people go crazy uh, and doing, doing crazy things and ending up in prison because they don't realize it, that they're just a number in this system and that there's, they're just being uh, systematically uh, reduced and destroyed. You know, you know, many leaders have come out, you know, throughout, throughout the years to, to stick up for their people. Like, for an example, uh, let's just say Martin Luther King and you said Malcolm X, etc. Has there ever been an attempt on your life for you to speaking up for our people yeah i've been in different places where i've been shot at but you know that's that was mostly like in new mexico and you know when you're up against it's pretty safe here in los angeles because you know it's puro raza here in los angeles but once you start going out there in those white neighborhoods you better go better watch out uh even when we were on catalina island i mean they were the, the white boys were getting their guns together and they wanted to take us out you know, but but uh we were able to deal with that situation and, and, and why do we oppose such a threat to these people? To these because people? we got the numbers, but we're not united. Wow. We, we got the numbers to, to to take the power, but we're not united. We're not united because we're we, because we can be, we become subjects of this mass psychosis, which causes us to be commotional, causing commotions, which causes us to go into organizations and cause more division than unity. Uh, which causes us to spread Vorullo and always talking bad about the raza, you know. This this is madness. It was created it's created by the system to cause chaos in our communities. And then you also have that little that that, that little small um, if you will portion of raza that thinks they're white. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a problem too. But we have to remember they've been programmed. Yeah, yes. Now can you just touch a little bit on that, please? You know, just that they've been programmed. So, again, if somebody's listening to this type of talk for the first time and they're wondering, you know, what do you mean they've been programmed? You know? Well, the biggest programmer of our minds, uh, and I'm here to advance minds, advance our intelligence. Schools are the biggest programmer mm-hmm. of the children. They want to make everybody into white to try to fit into to a white square. And if you're not a white square, you're not a square like them, you don't go nowhere. You know? Same thing in the job market. If you don't fit into that white square, you don't get a job. And all, also, these things are, are very difficult. It's always been unemployment in the United States. La, La Raza has always had 30% unemployment. Uh, the blacks have 35% unemployment. And the whites only have 10% unemployment. So the jobs are not there. Yeah, we, we condemn, you know, young people who can't get a job. You know, we condemn because, you know, they, you know and that's why it's important to, uh, to understand that we need to become, become united. No, that, that is... Okay. Let, let me, from what little experience I have in this podcast, you know, I've interviewed, um, I've interviewed the first Latina mayor of uh, the city of Downey. I had her here, okay? I interviewed Raza comedians i interview rasa actors i interview rasa rappers okay and i've a- asked them this very question in your field and when i say in your field in the music industry in the politics in the comedy industry you know in the film industry is there rasa hating on rasa and they all say yes that that's our biggest problem it's it's not just a problem it's 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 a age-old problem 
uh, by the invasion of, of the of the uh, white blood which came from Europe. For example, when Spain took over Mexico, they taught the Indians bad words so they would disrespect each other. You wow. know, cabro and pinche, you know, you know. So, okay, that's that's an example. Okay, uh, we also have that in in our system, our school system. You know, self denial and disrespecting our own people, and also it's like a it's it's like a delusion. You know, that we're better than somebody else. You know, yes. You know, we're you know, uh, envidia. You know. Which yes. comes from Spain, envy, jealousy. Yeah. See, yes. See, so, so a lot of these 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 uh, negative thoughts actually come from other cultures, uh, which were put upon us to keep us divided. Wow, that was so simple, but yet so damn deep, and it's true, and it's very very true because I see it amongst uh, Rasa rappers. Like we'll all be in a circle and talking, and as soon as one of them leaves, can't stand that motherfucker. And it's, and it's in us. And then we, I've had this type of conversation with others and we're trying to figure out like, what is it? What is it? Why is it that we can't see our people? I'll tell you. And this is why I've studied communications for so many years. We're talking about human communication. Yes. You know, humans are very quarrelsome. We are very quarrelsome. And the only way we can break that quarrelsome is to break those blocks, those communication blocks that we have talking bad about each other, they're looking bad at each other, giving each other dirty looks. We need to get rid of those communication blocks. And the only way we can do that is by looking at the Chicano paradigm, but also to look at our communication skills and to learn how to speak at a higher level. Yeah. You know, you know, the, you know, the Anglos used to fight all the time uh, in, back in Europe, but then they, they, they got Robert's Rules of Order where they put order into the meetings so they would stop fighting with each other, okay? And we need Chicago rules of order, you know, so that we stop fighting with each other. And in the Brown Beret rules, we have those rules of order uh, to stop all this bad communication against each other. You know, you know, growing up, growing up here in the barrio, right here in the city of Wilmas, um, when we, I started hanging out as a maybe 17, 18 years old, we had a, you know, couple of veteranos that would hang out with us. And every once in a while, they were like, you know, throw clutch at us. Hey, you don't do that shit. They would tell us. So those were kind of like our, if you will, somewhat of our older brothers on the street. And to me, it taught me something that possibly I wasn't learning at home, or maybe I just wasn't listening at home. Like, take care of yourself, dress good, carry yourself well, watch the way you talk. You don't always have to cuss. When you, when you talk to a man, look at him in his eyes. And it taught me a, a lot of things. I don't believe, David, that we have that anymore here on the streets. I, I, at least when I was younger, I had veteranos, not a lot, but the guys that did come around, that they would teach me certain things. I don't think we have that anymore. You know, we used to have a street code. I was talking to a couple of my buddies the other day, and they were like, there's no more street code, bro. There's no more street code. At least growing up, we knew, you know, you saw something, you didn't see it. You heard something, you didn't hear it. You know, cállate la boca. And that's it. Today, there's none of that anymore. Well, people have forgotten how to communicate, you know. One of the things that, one of the first things that Brown Brothers did back in, back in the days in the, uh, when we first started, before, the Brown Brothers were a coffee. We, before we came, became Brown Brothers, we, I started a coffee house, okay. okay. And that brought everybody together to learn how to communicate. So we were teaching students and, and car club people and Raza and Cholos and everybody. Yeah. We were teaching everybody how to communicate at a higher level or to talk more intelligently or to attempt to speak intelligently. And I think that's, that's, that's the bridge we need to, we need to, to uh, attempt. The bridge we need to attempt is to teach people how to speak more intelligently. Very, very true. And, and you know what? I encourage that. Um, talking about speaking intelligently, can you educate us a little bit uh, not, before we get to your new book? How many books do you have out right now? And, three books. Okay, three books. Can, can you name them for us and where can they uh, go out and get them? Well, um, Expedition Through Aslan. It's the history of the Brown Berets and, and uh, talks about Catalina Island and all the movements. Yes. Uh, you can find that in uh, you can find it uh, on Amazon 
Expedition Through Aslan by David Sanchez. Okay. It's a little expensive uh, on Amazon. You m- might be able to get it cheaper from me. Uh, the other book is uh, is Communication for Everyone. And th- that's what led me to my third book, Communication for Everyone. I used to teach uh, Speech 101 at Southwest College and uh, also Chicano Studies. But I taught uh, Speech 101 and I realized that we needed a book and, and the Chicanos need a book because the greatest story of organization is communication blocks uh, that we do all the time, you know, giving each other dirty looks, talk bad about each other. And so I wrote a book about, about teaching people how to speak at a, at a better level. Awesome. Uh, the problem is our schools do not teach our kids how to talk. So how are they going to learn? The kids, our kids don't know how to talk. What do they do? They start fighting with each other. Goo goo, gaga. You know, they start talking dumb, dumb stuff, you know. And so that's why it's important to, to teach. First of all, the schools need to, we need to force the schools to teach our children how to talk because somebody who can talk good can think good. And so that's why it's important. You know, my third book. Yes, sir. This is the baby right here. This is Chicano Universe Advanced Intelligence. Uh, what I did was I took all my notes for the last 40 years and put them into one intelligent book. Uh, to advance our thoughts and to prepare us for the jet age, for, prepare us for the future, prepare us for the future Chicano movement. Mm. And so this book here is, is on Amazon. It's called Chicano Universe Advanced Intelligence. It's the highest uh, level uh, anyone can attain. And everybody in prison should have this book so at least they can study. And so we need to study. Everybody needs to have a live study. Uh, and uh, that's what the Aztecs did. The Aztecs and the Indians, they had, everybody had a study. So today we all need a study, but, but one study that's very important is in this book, Chicago Universe Advanced Intelligence by Dr. David Sanchez. Chicano literature registered with the United States Library of Congress, Washington, D.C. You, you know what? Oh, man, when I was on the actual slip, my mind. <laughs> but, um, okay, now you, you had said, okay, now I remember now. When you said it's because kids in school today do not know how to communicate. Um, when texting first came out, I had my cell phone, okay? I received something. I kept beeping. I didn't know what the hell it was. So my son comes out of the room. How come you're not answering your phone? And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, I text you. And I said, you what? I text you. And I said, what the hell is that? I didn't know the technology term. And he goes, let me show you. I had a flip phone. And he showed me where to go. And he goes, I wrote you a message. And I go, how did you do that? And he goes, well, I was in the room and I was using the Wi-Fi and I was texting you. And I go, okay. But now, me being old school, I said, mijo, your room is like 10 feet away. You just couldn't come out and talk to me? I said that to say this, that today's generation, the majority of today's kids can text, they can Google, they can tweet, they can Facebook you, they can DM you, but can I hold the conversation? That is a problem. It's a world problem. Uh, only one out of five in the world can hold a conversation. That means one out of five can hold a conversation. Well, only one out of five in the world can, can talk. The rest of everybody else is dumbfounded. Uh, uh, imagine if they turned all this off. We have a generation that will be screwed. Because, wait, I can't talk into my phone. I can't tell. I um, had a buddy, and I shared this story before. His daughter got in trouble at school. And he told the daughter, I'll talk to you when we get home. The daughter ran out of the car, went straight to her room, closed the door, locked the door. And he was like, open the door, open the door. His phone goes off. And she says, I don't want to talk. I just want to text. Example. People, the art of talking is a lost art. And that's why we need to come back uh, to uh, our skills. We need to come back to this book here. Uh, Chicago Universe Advanced Intelligence talks about the need to to talk again, start talking again. We don't even talk to our neighbors, right? No. We need to start talking to everybody around us. Uh, and you know, our talking has been. If you go to the public schools, if you talk, you're going to get consequences. So they don't want our children to talk. They want to keep our children silent. You know, silence is golden. Remember that. Yes. When actually talking is the greatest intellectual developer in the world. 
I believe that. I believe that. Words. Words. I'm going to say something. People are probably going to get mad. Okay. Whether you believe in this or not, in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, you open it up and it says that God created the heavens and the earth. And he said, let there be light. Let there be this. I only say that to say this, that he used words. Just to piggyback off of what you say, words are powerful. And we need to go back to start talking. You know, today, you know how guys pick up on girls on social media? Just with their thumbs. With their thumbs. Back then when we were growing up, you actually had to walk up to the girl and talk to her. Today we don't do that. You know, everything is just, well, I liked her picture and I commented on her photo and she liked mine too and we're going to go out never even talked well most marriages 50 percent of marriages end up in divorces two years later and that's because they, they never learned how to talk with each other uh nor could they ever find a common subject to relate to or how to relate to each other on some subject and so that's why we come back to subjects uh okay. everyone should have a life study Absolutely. Uh, um, so these books are available. These three books are available on, on Amazon, right? No, just the, the uh, uh, Expedition Through Aslan. Okay. And also Chicano Universe Advanced Intelligence. But this is the main one. Chicano Universe Advanced Intelligence okay. is on Amazon. Okay, that one's on Amazon. Now the other ones, what, what, what is your main, uh, uh, I guess, what do you use more, Instagram or do you use Facebook? Because if, uh, the reason why I'm saying because if they wanted to contact you directly, how do they go about that purchasing a book from you? Well, it would be a lot easier to, to purchase it from Amazon or okay. to purchase it from the book company. Okay. Okay. And what book company is that? The name of the book company, they can go to rosedogbookstore.com. Okay. Yeah, I think I see it right there on the side. Rosedogbookstore.com uh, or, right. or Amazon, you guys. Yeah. Is there anything that maybe that, that sticks out that maybe you can read to us from it? Just to kind of give us a little example, I really want to. I really want these people to, to actually, uh, people that are watching, to actually uh, purchase it. I, I will definitely purchase it. Well, the book is, is filled with, uh, you know, uh, intelligent communication is a matter of talking to others and allowing others a chance to share their thoughts as well. Thinking has become a lost art. Uh, because most have become too busy or because there are too much noise pollution in their area. You, you know, r while you're looking for something else, um, I tested this kid the other day. I showed him a clock with the two hands. And I said, what time is it? And he looked at his cell phone. He was about 13 years old. He looked at his cell phone. Oh, it's one something. I said, okay, what time is it right there? And he couldn't tell the, he couldn't tell time. He goes, well, we have a digital one at home that just tells us, no, read that. And he couldn't. So, you know, what? I want to encourage uh, uh, you parents. If you guys have a, a clock at home that has the two hands, you know, one day randomly just ask your son or your daughter, what time is it? Because we have to learn that, you know, and my, my thing is this, that one day if this technology thing ever turns off, there's an entire generation that's screwed because they, they depend on this. This is their television. This is their VCR. This is their telephone. This is their, their, their love communication. You know, this is everything to them. Back in the day, we had to buy a VCR. We had to buy a telephone. We had to buy a, a clock. We had to buy so many things. And now it's all compacted into this. And there's just so many people that depend on this. And it's a good thing. But if for some reason this turns, this turns off, how are you going to communicate? You said that... We have to go back to thinking. Thinking has become a lost art. But it's true because we have this to think for us. And again, it's a good thing, but we need to educate ourselves. But there is also a, such a thing as, you know, higher level intelligence. Uh, and I point to it uh, going back to the Aztecs and going back to episodes in Chicano history. Yes. And when I say higher level intelligence, that means... That we have a higher level of thought, and but we have to we have to tell each other what that means to to us, and we have to show our intelligence by speaking it more intelligently. Yeah. Okay. And um, once again, I encourage everyone 
Chicano Universe Advanced Intelligence. I actually, I really like the name. I will, I will purchase it. And as a matter of fact, I want to encourage everyone to go to Amazon and purchase it or rosedogbookstore.com and help support the cause, La Causa. Yes. Um, we're in 2023. Um, what, what, how do I ask this question? Uh, what are the Brown Berets doing this year as far as any any organization, any any um, rallies that you guys have? Because I know last year, again, we, you guys went up against the whole gas price thing. Is there anything on this on your guys' calendar this right, year? Right now we're working on Catalina Island. I think I think we have a link here. It shows a recent movie that we made. And it's really a beautiful movie. It lasts about 40 minutes. Uh, and so uh, the movie is, we have a link on the information uh, to that particular movie that we just made. Okay, did, did you guys get that link? Yes, sir, it's in the description. Okay, it's in the See? description. Okay, yeah. so they could just click it, and it'll take them directly to it. Is it to a website, or is it to is it on YouTube? It's on YouTube, straight to the movie, yeah. Okay, and, and what is the name of it? The name of it is Dr. David Sanchez Tour of Catalina Island. Okay, okay. And, and was this film the time that you guys were up there? It's a combination of two or three films that we've, we've made. We're, we're very much into filmmaking, and we're also very much into training Brown Berets to become uh, professional actors. Awesome, awesome. So are you yourself going to be uh, acting? Well, I got my acting coach here. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but outside of that, uh, yes, I think well, everybody should, should, should get in front of the camera. You only, you only learn by, by practice, and, and Brown Berets have been doing very well in, in, in their movies. We've made something like 20 uh, semi-drama documentaries uh, over the last uh, 10 years and we continue to, to, to roll the camera. Awesome, awesome. Uh, David, before I bring uh, my friend Daniel here, Marvelous, uh, is there anything else that we didn't touch on? And I want to encourage you guys, before you guys call in, I want you guys, anything that I didn't touch on because I felt that we touched on so much on the first time that you were here. So, if you guys want to go back and review that episode, it is episode 264. But if there's anybody out there that wants to ask Dr. David Sanchez something, we're going to bring Marvelous in and, um, you know, you guys can ask him yourself. Is there, so is there anything else that you want to touch on? I, I just like to say that the, the Mayans, this is like 600 years ago, uh, the Mayan civilization talked about, uh, that there would be a new dawn or a new uh, thinking. Okay. And so we really need to work on and develop the new thinking. The new thinking. Okay. Uh, let me see. Up here. Yes. Wanted to make sure. Okay, guys, am I on? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Marvelous. Yeah, we're ready for you, brother. Okay. So go ahead and you guys put that number on. And once again, if there's anything that I didn't ask... I felt that I covered everything in episode, I believe 264, I said. But I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to call in and to ask questions. Anything you guys want to ask, we're going to go ahead and put that number up. The number's up on the screen. So um, make sure you guys listen to see whose mics are, who's hot, who's not, who's louder and whatnot. So once again, Marvelous, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Have me. Yes. Okay, here we go. Right here. Let me make sure we got this. Okay. All right. Marvis over here looking like a bandito. Bandito, baby. <laughs> Just make sure you speak directly into the mic, Marvelous. Got you. Okay, here we go. Call it your name or where are you calling from? Dan San Jose. What's up, my brother from San Jose? You got a question for uh, Dr. David Sanchez? Uh, for all you guys, actually. Okay. okay. Who, who did you guys vote for on the last presidential election? Go ahead. Biden. I don't vote. I don't believe in none of that. <clears throat> Hello? You know, the, lesser of yeah, the, who said the, the lesser of the two evils, of course. <laughs> he voted for Biden. I didn't vote. Oh, okay. Because uh, don't you guys seem to like a lot of times people are scared to say they voted for the other side? No. Uh, well, you know, some people may, you know, but that's why I like to say, if you have the, the balls, make the calls. 
Okay, and you did, and I'm glad you called and asked us. But I didn't vote. Look, here's my thing. I didn't vote when Trump uh, won over Hillary Clinton because, look, we live in the United States, the most powerful country in the world, and then we have those two clowns that are running. Like, that's the best that we have. So I'm like, you know what? Whoever's going to win is going to win, and Trump won, and then Biden won. And, you know, uh, what, you know, Dr. David Sanchez, I'm going to be honest with you, and this is where you can educate me and educate people like me is that sometimes we believe that our voting doesn't count. Are we being deceived when I say that? No, I, I, you have to understand we are up against a big, big system of rulers, a huge police state. And uh, sometimes we have to make sure that the less, lesser of the two evils or the lesser of the, of the police state uh, may be better than the other police state. So uh, that's why the vote, uh, just like Chicano, I mean, uh, a lot of people don't like the word Chicano, but that's that's the biggest group, you know. That's the biggest gang on the block, you know. Yeah. Mexican American, you were the biggest, you know, group on the block, and and people keep on going to other ways and other paths, yeah. and, and and sabotaging us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was that it, caller? No, that's not it. He, Trump is the first president not to be a politician. You guys know that, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So, why would you vote for Biden then if he's with the with the you know the system like that? Well, better than being with a racist system like like Trump. I mean, what what we he what he was advocating was the shooting of minorities. I mean, just by supporting the racists, the racists are going out. Uh, I can name four instances where they went they went out there and did some mass shootings against Chicanos and Mexicanos and, and Raza. And so we cannot support a, a racist system that thinks like that. We can only support a system that's going to, that's going to better benefit our community. You don't call so, it. So Trump's the first racist president, right? No, no. there are. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's racist that America. Good. Go ahead, caller. No, that's it. That's just, I'm just trying to say, the Chicano has the biggest vote in California. We don't leverage it, dude. You guys agree with that? I oh. we don't. We don't have candidates either, and who are running for those offices. Those rulers are. are we got leverage. We got leverage, we got but we don't leverage. got candidates. Go ahead, Marvelous. You want to say something? We. I think I think personally that the system will drown out our voice, regardless of what whatever we think that our vote is going to count or or. We knowing that we do have the majority, um, I think a key word that that um, that doctor said right here is the system. The system itself is is, is racially set against us, as, as calling us a minority, using all these all these all these verbiage words that put us down. Um, Latino, Hispanic, that's not us. We're not that, and um, we need to wake up. And as soon as we realize that we have, we're not, this system was made to be against us. It's made for them, by them. It's not for us. So why are we even contributing in that? We have a voice like, like, you know, the, the conversation in the beginning started with, we need more leaders. We do, but we need more leaders that, that have wisdom inside of them, have more Korra inside of them, have the heart that are, that are willing to go that extra mile and fight. Like, what are we fighting for? Or am I fighting because I got beat down in the back of the days? No, I'm fighting because us as a people are getting beat down. We've been getting beat down and we need to rise up. We are the sleeping giant. No, not only that, we're, we're, we're fighting for other things. Right now, we about to go to war. And, and when another Trump, there was no war. <laughs> It, it doesn't matter what what president you think is is going to be up there, bro, behind the pulpit. Um, r r the narrative that they're pushing, whether you want to believe that there's a war or not, it's going to happen regardless. The, the same instance as you thinking that your vote counts for something, it, they're still going to push their agenda, no matter who who what puppet they're going to put it to present itself to you. The agenda's the same. <clears throat> If, it, it, like okay, a big thing. I'm gonna use this as a as a reference, right? Right now, there's a big old um, stance on the cruising on Whittier Boulevard for the Chicanos, or uh, just us as a people, right? And they're trying to put a stop to it. And you got sheriffs that'll that'll go to certain um, people, you know, cholos or whatever, and they'll be like, "Oh, you can't shoot, you can't kick it right here, you can't whatever." And they're they're going to these little subset groups right here, of barbecuing, and they're telling them. But imagine if everybody, if the community got together and went in the middle of the street and said, "You're not blocking off our street. This is our this is what we're gonna do." 
What do you what do you think they're gonna do? They're gonna stand down. They're not gonna be able to they're not gonna be able to do anything. Us as a people imagine that? So they go like they did back in the days, like Spaniard did back in the days, and they go and they colonize certain little subset of, of the of the Inca, the Maya, the the Mexica, and they'll go and tell them, Oh, look it, this is happening, this is they're plotting on you, and they divide and conquer and divide and conquer. And that's what they're doing still. And and, and it's this is a little representation on Whittier Boulevard of what's going on. You know, they make us believe all this, all this and that, and that's not really the truth, bro. Let me let me reflect real quick. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's a treaty. The Mexican Americans, Chicanos, we have a treaty uh, called the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. It, it, they made up. What happened was the Gringos got tired of killing and fighting the Mexicans, so they made a treaty of peace. In that treaty, it says that Mexican Americans have the right to traditions. So cruising is a tradition. We have a right to cruise. Mm -hmm. It's part of the treaty, uh, uh, treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that answers your question, caller. Well, they can cruise, right? No, I just I just want you guys to be straightforward because I've seen previous podcasts when you, Tony, seem like, you know, you will vote for Trump and you seem like you try to pretext it. I, I never voted for Trump. I never said that. What I've said was this. I said, I said, put on the live chat how many people would vote for Trump because I said this because I think, and this is just me, that Biden has done such a terrible job that today, this time around, people would vote for Trump. And I do believe that Rasa would vote for Trump. Anything is right now, I think, believes better than Biden. Well, thank you very much. Oh, good. All right. Thank you, caller. Greatly appreciate that one. You, you know what, David? I always like to say that if you got the balls, make the call. So, okay, caller, your name and where are you calling from? Hi, my name is Francisco. I'm calling from Washington State. What's up, Francisco, from Washington State? What's up, Tony A? What's up, Marvelous? What's up, Dr. Uh, David Sanchez? Hello. Hey, uh, I have a question. So I know we were talking about unity amongst the Chicanos and the Raza. Do you think there's certain things in some of our cultures that nunca, we're never going to get over? Like, uh, for example, something I know about gang rivalry or like how some people from Texas don't view themselves as Chicanos or Mexicanos, but as Tejanos? Well, unity is, 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 is not easy. Uh, the problem is people are not willing to pay the price for unity. That means the price to become united. It, it takes time and it takes effort to become united. I, I know I hear a lot of stuff from Texas that, that they, don't, they don't want nothing to do with California. I, I, I don't listen to that. I don't go by that, you know. I believe that Chicano, as Chicanos, uh, we can become united. As Mexican Americans, we can become united. We just have to work toward it. And everybody, people just kicking back, watching TV and doing nothing, that does not help us. We need to get out there and, and, and uh, get out there in, in the backyard and do some, some work and organize our community. Caller, was that it? Okay. Uh, marvelous. Do you think there's uh, some um, beef like within clicas and streets that will prevent us from being united? I do believe that that's one of our biggest hindrances, bro, um, to be honest with you. But I also think and believe that it comes from our, our um, educational system, bro. We believe so much that the system is going to raise our kids to... to give us our health diet to teach us proper languages to show us our history or our culture and that's the biggest lie that we lie to ourselves we've lost all tradition of, of having an oral history of learning from your your mother your grandmother your great grandmother your great grandfather learning all all the stuff of how to really cure ourselves with organic foods soups you know um manzanilla canela you know, all those old traditions are being lost, bro. And and um, the school the 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 school system it, it teaches you know against us. It's, it's it teaches separation. I think I believe we're not learning none of our our, our traditions on where our, our terms and 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 words come from or nothing like that. And we're just a we're a tribal people regardless, bro. We're really we're we're a tribal people. So I think it's in us to fight regardless. You know, we're just fighting the wrong people. We're fighting each other. 
Yep, agreed. Instead of people making those teas and growing those teas at home, they go buy my Starbucks now. Yeah. Well, we're really, you know, let me tell you real quick. I wrote this book, Chicago University Advanced Intelligence. This book here is is Kletcha. This book is a school in itself. School does not have to be in a building. School does not have to be, uh, you know, where there's a where there's a, 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 or a teacher or yeah. a teacher. So I wrote this this, this book. It's, a, it's a, the school in this book, and we need to be, be schooled uh, for unity. Absolutely. Okay. All um, good, color. Can I give a shout out real quick? Yes, sir. Can I give a shout out real quick? Yes, sir. All right. Right now I'm in the doghouse, so I gotta give a shout out to my wife, Maria Infante. <laughs> hey, Maria, please forgive him. Don't worry, he blocked her. He he can come back in now. All good, bro. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, good night. All right. All right, let's keep it pushing. Let's see. I sure we missed a lot of phone calls. Here we go. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Hello, Tony. What's up, my so brother? Marvelous. How you doing? What's up, brother? How you doing? What's up to the founder, the doctor? I'm sorry, this, this is uh, bad people calling from the city of Atlanta. <laughs> but um, I, wa I wanted to ask um, uh, the doctor if he uh, still supports uh, Kevin De Leon. Well, you know, it was it was stay it was known fact that Kevin De Leon never said anything. And uh, that's, you know, this is what happened. What happened was there was an attack against all of us because they were putting those three count, these those three Chicago councilmen, they were putting them on stage, putting them on the news for about a whole month, attacking La Raza, making all Raza look bad, making all politicians look bad. And I said to myself, when is this going to stop, you know? And so uh, one day at the Brown Beret meeting, uh, a group came against Ke Kevin De Leon, and so then a few people came to speak for him. Uh, it turned out to be a very good rally, uh, and uh, I still support uh, Kevin De Leon. He did not say anything bad, but yet he okay. was a right. victim of people who wanted publicity for themselves by joining the lynching mob. Okay, well, um, I, I, I disagree with... Uh just the uh, perspective of De Leon, but I give you mad props, Doctor, because uh, you still uh, you you stand your ground, and even even when there's Latinos that are are in disagreement, even even if we disagree, that we can go ahead and open openly discuss that. That's where progress is at. So, um, thank you. Even though I disagree, so even though I disagree, I I respect you for being honest and standing your ground on on your opinion. But uh, another question is: Have you heard of um, Ilich Ramirez Sanchez, and I believe that he's. Uh, if you, first off, if you've heard of him, or, or marvelous, or Tony, if you've heard of Ilich Ramirez Sanchez. No, I have not. Because uh, I just think he's um, probably the, the Latino that probably had uh, more influence than uh, Che Guevara or Fidel Castro or probably um, any any other person out there, but. Um, just to sum him up, you know, he was a, a Colombian who, you know, he, he just had so much influence in the world that um, you know, he got to the point that the British SES, the French Foreign Legion, Interpol, and even the, us uh, U.S. Marines uh, would, would have loved to have grabbed him. Just, uh, just to do that, uh, you know, I, I know uh, Mr. Dr. Sanchez there was speaking about the high gas prices before. But uh, he want, he once them had a large influence. He almost took total control of OPEC, so he could have brought down the the price of a barrel of oil to a dollar if he wanted to. But uh, that's just uh, something else right there. And um, I should have written down the third question. But but other than, other than that, um, no, uh, you know, even though we're all um, have different different opinions and different perspectives, I I respect uh, everyone on there for um, you know again just discussing unity and our differences because if, if we don't talk about it, if we if we just become like I fools and just focus on taking selfies and then text or like Texas fools would just go ahead and hug their cows, you know, there'll be no progress. But 
as long as we communicate and see our differences and see how we can go forward. Um, Tony, thank you for um, having, uh, again, this platform where we could all agree to disagree or just discuss and go together forward. Thank and, you. Uh, shout out to Norby for being for being the customer of the month at Taco Bell. Hey. Good night, everyone. <laughs> I will keep on watching. Thank <laughs> you. Good night. Good night. Okay. Let's keep it pushing and see who's the next caller. Okay, you guys, we missed, missed about seven phone calls, so let's let's go. Get get directly to your question, please. Okay, here we go. Caller, your name, and where are you calling from? Hey, Daniel from San Diego. Daniel, how you doing? San Diego in the building. What's good, my bro? You got a question? Good. Nada, carnal. Just now, respects for you, Tony, and and Marvelous. Uh, I'm also a Brown Beret that's land member here in San Diego, so I wanted to make the official invitation to you all, carnales. On June 24th and 25th, we're going to have our first annual Rasta Fest. We're having Rasta from all over our plan come through. Danza, poets, rappers, DJs, breakdancing. So I want to make the official invitation to David Sanchez, the founder of the Brown Berets, que le caiga. Okay, I'll try to be there. And, and, and thank you, bro. And this is going to be in San Diego? Yeah, Simon Carnal at the Centro Cultural de la Rasta. Hey, bro. Right you... in Balboa Park. Okay, Balboa Park. Okay. Do you have, I mean, do you follow me on Instagram at all, bro, so you can DM me this info? Because I would really, really like to try to make it. Yeah, carnal, again, it's like I said, it's just promoting unity, community, and all of us coming together, networking, healing, learning, and just showing love to each other. When I tell everyone, we make everyone else rich except ourselves. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So if you could give me that info, por favor, bro, I will definitely try to make it. I, that sounds something uh, to me that would be a blessing to me. So I would really like to try to make it. Yeah, carnal, that's why I'm mean, showing nothing but love to your show, carnal, and putting us on and give us the platform. <clears throat> And I agree with Marvelous. We're not Hispanic we're Latin, or no Latinos. We're Mexicanos, Mexicas. We're indigenous. These are our lands. And so it is. Respect to, to your show, Carnal. Thank you, Carnal. Stay blessed. Gracias. Adios. Adios. Okay. okay. Let's go. Call her your name and where are you calling from? My name is Alfonso Gomez. I'm from Ceres. You guys will probably know it more closer to Modesto, California. Okay. Okay. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good, man. How's it going, Tony A? How's it going, mm -hmm. Dr. David Sanchez? Good. Marvelous, everybody over there. Everything's good, brother. I had two questions, man. I had two questions. Um, I had a question regarding, have you ever um, had, uh, did, did you ever run into Cesar Chavez or did you ever come across him in any kind of political way or any kind of like physical way? And second, did you know that the Huelga bird, respectfully, I say this, if you turn it upside down, it's a pyramid. Does that have anything to do with the with the knowledge you know about the Aztecs and the history you know about what what the people is about? You want to take the first one? I, I just say, that, you know, Cesar Chavez, he was, he was a great man. I mean, uh, he died kind of young, but the reason why he died young because he was being pressured by the system. Uh, I talked to him uh, just uh, months before he died, and he, he was telling me that... Uh, that he had a lawsuit that was destroying the funds of the United Farm Workers, and he was really uh, angry over this whole. Or not angry, but just t torn apart that, that that they would take half the half the funds from the farm workers. I'm talking about millions, and he was really upset about that. But that's just just, just what happens to all of our leaders and all of our organizations. Yeah. We're under attack all the time. Yeah. So because so, um, I'm sorry because I'm, he did have he was the first creator of um of a credit union, he had a gas station. There's a lot of things that about Cesar Chavez that people don't know about the non-violence movement. But the Brown Berets, it's such an honorable pleasure of mine to talk to you. And honestly, I had one more question. I don't know, it would be so awesome if in the future, I don't know if you know anything about the Kelly Max movement with American Cholo and um, what they got going on over there with that. But if you were to be a speaker there one day, man, that would be amazing. I mean, you have so much knowledge and history. You're like a library of Chicano culture. And I think that it doesn't have to necessarily have to fall on a certain name or category, but you sharing what you have with us Chicanos and most of us that are growing up, you know, it needs to get passed on. We don't know this, you know, I'm in my forties. There's people in their 50s. You, you, I, I'm not sure what age you're back at you're in, but I think it's so so important to continue 
surpasses history, you know. Um, the, the thing with Cesar Chavez is because the Brown Berets were more of a, would you consider, consider them more of a militant uh, organization or a peaceful protest um, organization? Well, <laughs> all I can say is that basically Brown Berets have always been a nonviolent organization. Although there have been instances where, you know, uh, Brown Berets had to, uh, defend themselves from from attacks, from uh, attacks from gangs and attacks from political gangs, and uh, and the Brown Braves also were, were were there when Cesar Chavez needed some some help. Uh, so, uh, but basically, uh, you know, we 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 are soldiers of peace. You know, we have no problems. We only have a mission. Awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. I I, I thank you for the time for speaking to me. It's an honor to talk to you. Mar- marvelous i appreciate you tony tony a you guys are awesome but honestly if this 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 general of history was to speak at a at a at a at a thing where where most of us go to or something where it could gather us man it's so important to get influenced by true influencers not just noise influencers this is an historical person you have in front of you i really enjoyed the last interview you did and when I seen Tony post this, I could not wait to watch this. And um, I just want to say I highly respect you. I'm from the 219 area, the Modesto area. So out this way, it's more of the, you know, si se puede cause, the nonviolence, the, the, people's, the people's cause. And, and I know the Brown Berets go a long way all over the, everywhere. But there's a lot of causes that once you put this Gavan together, it can make a true change, you know? Absolutely. <clears throat> Thank you, my bro. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time, Dr. David Sanchez. I appreciate your, your your years of labor, your years of striving, and I respect you highly. Thank you, Tony, for taking me the um, giving me the opportunity to speak to him, okay? Gracias. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Let's see who's next. Let's keep it pushing. And once again, you can get his book at Amazon.com, okay? Call her your name, and where are you calling from? What's going on, man? This is Gustavo, man, from East Oakland, man. What, what, uh, I just had a Gustavo? question. Um, what's going on, man? Uh, I, I, we would always hear about, like, times where uh, the Brown Berets and, uh, and the uh, the Black Panthers kind of linked together and did some stuff, man. Do you remember any of that? Or, like, you know, there, I guess there were certain protests where, you know, uh, they kind of, you know, clicked up and, and kind of, uh, you know, we're out there protesting and stuff like that. Do you remember any of that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we uh, got together with her. We wanted to know, they wanted to know what we were going through and we wanted to know what they were going through. And, uh, call, of course, the Brown Braves would not go out there and have a shootout with cops because that might not be too safe. Uh, and, and, then, and at the same time, the Brown Braves were really not, you know, a safe organization like the farm workers. Nonetheless, uh, we did have uh, a good communications with uh, Aldrich Cleaver. Uh, he was very good. Aldrich Cleaver was from, from was from the barrio, from Rose Hills in, uh, in East LA, and so uh, me and Aldrich Cleaver we used to get together every now and then, have a few beers, and and discuss tactics. And uh, our main tactic was we, we was not violence. Our main tactic was organizing mass demonstrations, marches, and occupations like the occupation of Catalina Island. So. You see, the di- tactics are a little different, but there are tactics. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, Huey P. Newton, uh, any run-ins with him ever? No, no. I, I never got to meet him. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, oh, really? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, did you ever visit uh, the Bay Area or Oakland at all? Uh, yeah, Aldrich you know, Cleaver. Back in, back in the day. Yeah, Aldrich Cleaver lived in the Mission District, so I would go to his place every now and then. Uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I know there's a lot of history out there in the mission, um, you know, uh, throughout the years. Uh, you know, they've definitely, um, you know, been around out that way. But I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Okay, let's go to the next caller. Okay, here we go. Caller, your name, or where are you calling from? San Jose, California. San Jose, California. What's up, Tony? What's up my What's brother? What's up, Marvelous? What's up, homie? Hey, hey, just respect across the board. And I just want to know, what what's he know about the Black Berets? Do they come first? Well, the Black Berets were kind of like, uh, 
they did pretty much they wanted to do their own thing, and they did. You know, they they were based in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, they got caught in a crossfire, and police killed four of them. Uh, so pretty much they moved to uh, San Jose, and uh, they've been a pretty active and positive organization that I know of. Yes, yeah. because yeah, those are my uncles. Oh, the good man. All right. Just want to give a shout out to Henry Dominguez and R.I.P. to Jesse Dominguez. Okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> you guys have a good one. Much respect from up north. Thank you. And, and bless all the cell soldiers on, on the on the fucking. <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> on the comments, on the comments, man. Tell them. All right. You guys have a good one. All right. Stay blessed on me. Okay. Let's go. Let's keep it pushing. <laughs> You good, David? I'm good. Okay. Good, Marv? Go always, in. always, Tony. Call her your name or where are you calling from? What's up, gentlemen? Hope all is well. My name is Notorious One, photographer for Talgate, California. Um, I first heard, I first found out about David Sanchez through the first interview. And I easily gravitated to the conversation because you brought up how you went to John Adams Middle School. So um, that was the first time I found out about David Sanchez and the Brown Red. And um, to make a long story short, I went to Sycamore Park. I guess they had like a Mashika New Year. I seen some brown barrettes right there as well. I um, brought up David Sanchez. I brought up how, you know what, I'm fascinated with the whole story and everything. But they had a story about some guy named Carlos Montes. And from my understanding, they didn't want, they didn't want to talk too much about it. But from my understanding, he's also an originator and you guys had a fallout. So I just have two questions. Um, if you want to talk about it, what was the, the reason for the fallout? And will you guys ever come together uh, and work together once again? Well, there was never, never no fallout. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened. Okay, Carlos Montes uh, uh, had uh, an arrest warrant uh, for arson. And so he, he ran away uh, for seven years and went to New Mexico. And when he came back, he, he went to court and they dropped the case. Uh, and he's never been a brown beret since then. But Carlos Montes was a brown beret for about a year. Okay, but, you know, uh, there was a little argument recently, you know, where I supported Kevin De Leon and we organized a, a beautiful rally. Uh, and anyway, um, you, go, you go, to, go to YouTube and, and look up a uh, 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 support rally for Kevin De Leon. Okay, we supported Kevin De Leon because it was mass chaos, mass psychosis against La Raza politicians. Everybody was saying, oh, those suckers are no good. You know, the Chicanos are no good. And so we put a stop to it. We went out there and we saved Kevin Leone and we put a stop to it, this chaos that was against us. Meanwhile, Carlos Montes is demonstrating with Black Lives Matter at Kevin Leone's house. Okay, So there, there's the conflict right there. You know, uh, We supported Kevin Leone and he was protesting at Kevin Leone's house. And but outside of that, there's, there's never been really no no clash. Uh, it's just a gentleman's argument. Right. Okay. Most well, definitely. Well, like I said, I mean that's just the question I have. But nevertheless, I respect you and everything that you've done for the culture. Me, I'm a proud Mexican. I'm brown and proud. And once again, much love and respect to all you guys. You guys have a blessed night. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you. Okay, let's keep it going. Uh, let's see who else is calling. Let's go. Okay, let's get them calls in. You guys told me today I'm going to call. I'm going to call in. Okay, well, we're waiting for you guys. Let's go. Call her your name, and where are you calling from? Jay, South Texas. Jay from South Texas. <laughs> you always put a smile on my face, Jay. <laughs> What's going on, my bro? What's up, Tony? Buenas noches. Buenas noches, bro. Yeah, I got... um. I, I want to know just to Dr. Sanchez, want to know just to Marvelous, the whole team there. Uh, I got a question for uh, Dr. Sanchez. Yes. Dr. Sanchez, um, do you feel that the gang culture has given the Chicano movement and the Chicano word a bad stigma? Well, you have to understand that. When you say gang culture, are you ta you're talking about prison culture? Uh, sometimes prison culture is not as positive as college culture or university culture, but they're all cultures nonetheless. 
I think that uh, uh, the gangs actually, you know, were our main force uh, uh, in the Brown Berets. Uh, for example, when we organized the Brown Berets in the beginning, we had West Side Flats and East Side Flats uh, in the Brown Berets, and they gave us the numbers that we needed to, to move on to the moratoriums and to move on to the school walkouts. You know, so, so in a way, the gangs have done a, a great job uh, in contributing their service. Uh, pretty much, uh, I think, uh, nowadays things have changed. Uh, there's not a lot of gangs anymore like before because of the gang injunction. So most of your gangs are very weak and very small uh, at this time. Uh, nonetheless, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm from, I, I grew up in the Vario, you know, so I have respect for the Vario's. Okay, okay. Second question. Uh, I see you wearing the Mexican flag there on your right arm. Uh, what, what, what does that Mexican flag uh, mean to you as you wear it? Well, it's, a, it's the flag of the people, okay? Uh, our history, Chicano history is also history of Mexico. I mean, we cannot isolate uh, the history because this, uh, because this used to be Mexico. Texas used to be part of Mexico. Arizona used to be part of Mexico. Uh, the flag is the flag of the, of the people, and uh, right now at this time we don't have any other flag, not unless you want to make one. But <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, is it, it works. It works for us. Uh, gives us good public relations with uh, the Mexicanos, and it gives us uh, a flag that we need. And we flew this flag on Catalina Island because we said that the island was literally stolen uh, from from Mexico, and now we're saying that the island belongs to the Chicanos and the Mexicans. So, okay, so from your answer, basically what I'm getting from your answer is that you're using the Mexican flag as a prop because you would replace it with any other flag? Is that what I'm getting? <laughs> well, <laughs> not, no, what I'm saying is there is no other flag at, at this time outside of the Brown Bray flag. Okay. And uh, last question uh, last question for Marvelous. Marvelous, I hear you, uh, from what I get from you, it sounds like you're, uh, like you're anti-education. Now, let me ask you this real quickly. Uh, Tony said you had a sur some surgery done to your mouth. Let me ask you, did you go to a doctor that studied uh, medicine, or did you do surgery on yourself? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Man, I need, to, I need to meet you in person, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, 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 we can, definitely. Um um, I, I, I love I love the, the conversations, though, bro, for real. Um. So the first question was what again? Your anti-education. Uh, um, if you know anything about me, bro, um, I'm all for it. Like I'm not against. I'm I'm a, I'm all for real education. Um, not the school system, if, if that's what you're asking. Um, um, oral history is very important. Um, to me, um, that that should be the first thing. And education starts at, at home, not not in a in a school. Or what you think is a school? Those are indoctrinational um, places for indoctrination. It's not you're not learning nothing about yourself. You know, um, you know, you're asking the doctor right here about the me uh, Mexican flag and stuff. And in your mindset, you believe in the separation of, of Mexico being separate from the United States. And I'm and what it is is you know he's he's giving you a statement that it represents our people here yes. on the land that that was stolen. It, just because somebody puts a gate, if somebody puts okay. a gate, if somebody puts a gate in the middle of your yard, and you're standing on one side of it, well, does that mean that that yard, that other part of the yard, isn't yours anymore? Well, well, well. Sometimes you need to be fact checked because you keep saying that the land was stolen, but the land was fought for, and there was a war there that was lost. There was treaties that were broken. And, uh, there, there was there was a war that there was a war that was lost. Mexico has always gone to war <clears throat> with any with anybody. Well, that's the reality. Uh, I mean, we we got to speak facts, bro. We can't we can't we can't just uh, speak out of uh, what we think. I'm not speaking on what I think. Do you want to talk well, about? I mean, do you want to do you want to talk about declarations that were made and and not abided by? <laughs> do you want to talk about yeah, all the con? About, uh, do you want to talk all, about all the all the all the um, you know, the, the people that conned indigenous people out of their land and made them sell it for like eight dollars. Like, do you want to talk about that? These are con well, These yeah, are con but, artists. But, but, but talking about, but talking about that, well, I mean, you do realize that 
other tribes went to war with other tribes in Mexico. You, you know that, right? That what? Oh, yeah. The other tribes went went to battle with other tribes in Mexico. Yeah, that, but that, that, that was a long time ago. I, mean, I think as of 1848, okay, this, that's when the, <clears> two, <throat> that's when the, the, the war ended between the United States and Mexico. And one of the reasons why we flew the flag on Catalina Island was was to mark back on history. It's like the word La Raza. A lot of people say don't use the word La Raza because that's that's a Spanish word. You know, but what we've been using that word La Raza for the last uh, sixty years. So, you know, so why change it? You know, if it worked then, it's going to work now. And you know, the flag for now works for us. Not until you give us a better one. All good, Jay. I appreciate you All calling right. in, homie. No, no, no problem. Last thing that I'll leave you guys. Marvin, are you healing your surgery with Mantanilla? Yeah, I actually am, bro. I actually am. I, I do oh, drink okay. a lot of hot teas. If oh. you ever need, like, anything, homie, hit me up on IG. And it's not from Starbucks. I got, hey, no, but I, hey, on, on, hey, on, I some, <laughs> hey, on some real shit, homie. What's up? Um, some dude, real shit. What's up? What's up? All, all, all love, homie. When you're in L.A., hit me up and so we could really have a conversation, for real. No, no, definitely. And whenever you want to come to South Texas, I got you, bro. Hell yeah. South Texas in the building. All right, Carnal. All right, you guys have a good night. Okay, let's go. Uh, that was a good one. Let's see. Caller, your name, and where are you calling from? This is Don Perruco. I knew Portland, it was you. It, I knew. I heard that Perruco. I heard that or that or rolling in. Oh, yeah, the R. Um, I had a question for uh, Dr. David. Yes. Um, uh, do you think it's important to teach uh, our people about uh, Pancho Villa and Zapata? Definitely. What do you think of that? Well, a lot of people don't realize it, but, the, but a lot of the brown berets uh, were the grandchildren of, uh, of people who fought in the Mexican Revolution. For example, my grandfather. Yeah, yeah. My grandfather right. rode with Pancho Villa, you know, and he got a medal for fighting in Zacatecas for the hill for the Bufa in Zacatecas, and he was awarded all kinds of land. What I'm trying to say is that you know it's important to know about Pancho Villa, and it's important to know about uh, you know Emiliano Zapata, Pancho Villa, uh, okay. and Carranza. It's important to know the history of Mexico because that's also part of our history. Yeah, you know, and the reason why I say that is because I, I think uh, a lot of people, you know, I, I'm thinking like maybe like 80%, you know, or people right now, like, they have no clue, you know, like, they might just hear the name, you know, like over some stereotypes, but, they, I, you know, I think that's, that should be something, you know, they need to be teaching more because that that's like an example of of what we can do and the power that we have, you know, we organize each other and become one i mean look 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 uh look what they did you know like we have the power right now and, and probably even more you know we probably have more power now and i i think that should be you know like thought more for you know to a new upcoming <clears throat> generation because to me that's like the best example of what we can do if we unite and i think a lot of people are really uh lacking on that you know you know, I, I just don't want, you know, them to go out in vain, you know, like, you know, they, they give out their, you know, they gave their life, you know. So I, I, I really think that should be a uh, thought more, you know, and uh, and I was, I was going to ask you if that's in your book, but I'm, you know, I'm assuming probably not right now. Well, you know, is that something you ever like thought? Well, I, I did. I think I did talk about Pancho Villa. Uh, yes, yes. In this book, there's there's a there's a there's three pages de dedicated to Chicano history, and I, and I do talk about Pancho Villa, uh, and and uh, you know and, and the other leaders in Mexico. Uh, unfortunately, they were all shot. What I'm trying to say is, that we have to yeah. you know the schools do not honor our history, okay, and we have to make the schools to honor our history. We have to make the schools teach uh, Chicano studies and teach what happened to Pancho Villa. And Carranza, you know, and Zapata. We need that information needs to get out. The only thing, the only tool we have available are the schools, and we have to force the schools because they're not going to give it to us for free. We have to force the schools to to teach our kids how to talk, 
and also to teach our kids the history of La Raza. Yeah, see, but I, I think I think the schools will never, you know, I think that's something they will never think about or even do because, like I said, that will show an example of the power that we have by mm-hmm. uniting. Facts. And uh, I have another question. I don't want to take too much time. Uh, do you, who do you think killed Pancho Villa? Do you think the, uh, the American government was the one that, you know, they set that up because, you know, they were <clears> embarrassed <throat> of, you know, Pancho Villa invading United States. Well, of course, you know, they were, they were, like yeah. the they, they were, they were, he was killed by six thirty out six rifles, and those rifles came from America. Uh, nonetheless, when you are in a revolution, that's why so many Raza came to, to the United States during that time, because it was it was pretty bloody in the Mexican Revolution. And, you know, there was over a million, one million to two million people that died in the Mexican Revolution in 1910. And, I mean, we're so easy, so ready to kill each other, you know, and we need to stop that mentality about killing our own raza and shooting our own raza. But, the, but then again, at the same time, that's the history of Mexico, and we need to learn, we need to learn their history, and we need to, we need to, look at, at one time they said they, no, they would never have Chicano studies. In Chicano studies, they talk about uh, Mexican history. In Chicano studies, they talk about Pancho Villa. Before, they said that we could not have okay. Chicago studies, and we got it because we fought for it. So we can make the schools teach the history. Oh, yeah. I believe that, too. Well, I don't want to take too much time. Uh, I'm glad to be talking to you, and uh, it's really an honor. And uh, have a good night. Marvelous. Don't let him get to you, bro. <laughs> no, I'm not, bro. Uh, much, much respect to uh, uh, all you guys, the crew, and uh, and everybody else, too. We Viva la raza. Have a good night. Yes. Okay, let's keep it pushing. Uh, and everybody else. Turn it down. All right, here we go. Come on, let's go. Here we go. Call her your name or where are you calling from? Um, You can call me Bosley, and I'm calling from Arizona. How are you doing? You got a question? Um, yes, sir. Um, Hello, Tony. Um, Thank you for taking my call. You're um, welcome. I do have a... A question and a comment for Dr. Sanchez. Go for it. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, Dr. Sanchez and Marvelous. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Yes. Um, okay, Dr. Sanchez. Um, um, if you if you allow me, I, I just have a question and a comment. And also, I I did uh, turn off the um, the. Uh, the video, I can't see you guys because I didn't want to get this uh, echo on the voice. Right. I just want to leave you with a thought and, and a question, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Is that all right? That's fine. Yes. Okay. So, okay, uh, Dr. Sanchez, very quick. Um, uh, this company that created these tennis shoes called um, Cortez, um, they were created to honor uh, a wrong uh, wannabe hero, a false hero, Hernan Cortez, who actually uh, tortured and murdered our um, leader, Aztec leader in, in the uh, mystic Aztec. And um, they want to fool us by telling us that they want to honor the wrong person by naming uh, Cortez. Uh, in tennis shoes. Now, do you agree with me if we should take off them shoes because it's false part of the history that continue and fooling us, the Mexican raza? And we should probably even be burning them and not making these companies rich. And do you agree with me? Um, the, um, what was my last one? Um, well, you know what? That we should not. Let him answer the first part. Okay. okay uh, you know, if they're, if they're doing wrong, spreading false information, uh, we should just boycott, tell people to boycott. What, 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 what company it, is it? It was Nike Cortez. Oh, Nike Cortez. Yeah, we should just boycott cor- por- boycott no- Nike. That means tell the people not to buy from Nike uh, in protest. Yes, yes, sir, because I see a lot of the raza wearing Cortezes for many, many years. And I always wondered why I never bought one pair of shoes and gave this company my money for a false history to honor a false 
criminal that actually killed our Aztec leader, Cuauhtémoc. And he was tortured. And the reason why they created these shoes and this company was that Cuauhtémoc, in order to um, confess, the uh, in Spanish we say cantar, they wanted him to say the truth as to where was the Mexican uh, rich gold and the riches. But he didn't succumb to what they were trying to do to him, and they started torturing him to burn his feet, and they made him walk all the way to Honduras. And there um, he finally died. But um, the company, um, this company, I don't want to mention their name, they wanted to um, keep on continuing on fooling us. So what they did is they honored Cortez, Hernan Cortez, for burning our Cuauhtémoc leader, our Aztec leader, feet. <clears throat> And so this is why the company created these tennis shoes and they named Cortez. So not all these raza that claim that they're all into our culture, that claim that understand all this Aztec history, they're buying the American version history and not really digging in deep and going into Mexico. I had an argument with a um, documentalist from Mexico City, his name is Manuel Peñafiel, and my actual conversation is on his Facebook page, and he corrected me, and he's telling me all the truth about our Mexican history. And me, if I were all these guys, I would take off all the fucking shoes, excuse my French, well, my Spanish, or my whatever language <laughs> you guys want to call it, and um, I'd take those shoes. Either stop paying these companies for honoring the wrong person, the wrong murderer who, who tortured and killed our leader, and either even burn him or boycott, out, like you say. Thank you so much, sir. You are my hero. Thank you so much, Tony, for giving me the opportunity. That's all I wanted to say. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a blessed night. You know, one, Tony, one of the main items that they that he wanted and was part of the golden you know what he was looking for um or whatever it was the golden uh, tabernacle bro that mm. they were looking for which our god spoke to us yes here we go call her your name and where are you calling from it was good tony was good marvelous and uh dr sanchez it's me eddie from pasadena how you guys been what's good, up, good. what's up eddie how you doing been good that's um how you um I just had a couple questions for uh, for uh, Dr. Sanchez and possibly one for Marvelous. So I'm going to start off with uh, the, the couple ones that I have for Dr. Sanchez, and I'll try to make it as quick as possible. But um, I wanted to ask, um, is the Brown Barrett for, um, for VASA to become citizens here in the U.S.? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, we want we want we want the Rasa to become citizens because that way they can vote, and uh, they can also get more services. So it's really important for everybody to become a citizen. Mm, I see. I remember. I remember around 2020 um, when Biden became president. Supposedly, he was going to help. Um, he was going to help the Rasa become citizens, but I don't know if he's really helping or not. Uh, I just thought of it as it was more of a hoax rather than him actually helping the people. It's and true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's what else? And I wanted to ask you uh, uh, also, and another thing I wanted to ask, um, how do you feel that our people pretty much don't want to, our people, uh, um, the Rasa that are born here in the U.S. Um, nowadays don't want to, Educate, educate ourselves on our cultura or, or um, be proud of our roots. And we just want to embrace um, the American ideology that they've implemented on, onto our people from the public, in the public schools. Well, the, the mass psychosis includes, you know, trying to make everybody to become white, you know. And so when you have a Chicano... And then all of a sudden he becomes white. Well, then he becomes like schizophrenic, two personalities, you know. And we just got to stick to our own personality, you know, Chicano, La Raza personality, 
rather than trying to take on a white personality. Yeah. That's what causes the fusion, confusion is the uh, take on of other personalities. And and I have some acquaintances that come that come against me for trying to educate myself about our 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 culture and our gente. And I look at them like they're pretty much lost, like they don't know what they're talking about. And they basically don't like the fact that I'm doing the opposite of what they're doing. Um, in a sense, I'm trying to, I'm basically just trying to educate myself. Just keep educating the people. Don't stop. Keep, right. Keep fighting oh, for Oh, and the another people. thing I wanted to ask for, okay. Oh, another thing I wanted to ask, Marvelous. Um, this is just this is just a quick question. What's your thoughts on Tenochtitlan, which is now known as Mexico City, pretty much in ruins because of the Spaniards? It's sad, bro. It's it's sad. A, a lot of our our stuff has been stolen and robbed. You know, I I hate when they when they show videos and stuff and, and oh we're we're finding new things and new artifacts and it's like man, all the original stuff has been sold I, traded uh a lot of it's been put in the smithsonian supposedly you know the queen of england took a lot of artifacts to herself um like it, it's messed up yeah, all, that, all the stuff that, that's yeah, been taken that it should be it should be it's yeah, all, over there in the museum like, in europe it should be over here in its proper place exactly that's what pisses me off sometimes when i see our our indigenous items being in these European countries and these countries in Europe refuse to give it back to Mexico. Like that, that kind of, that aggravates me. Right. Right. All good, my bro. Yeah. But, but I hate, but I really don't like it when, um, when Rasta like honors, like the, Span like the Sp what the Spaniard did, like it was a good thing. All good, my bro. Hey, your thank you. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Uh, for, for calling, homie. No Appreciate problem. you. You guys have a blessed. You too. Thank you. Okay, we got about eight more minutes, okay? Eight more minutes to call. So if you're going to get it in, get us get it in right now. Okay, so uh, I don't want to hear later on. No, I didn't get a chance to call. We're, right now, we're giving you an opportunity to call. So here we go. Let's see. Call your name and where are you calling from? Chava from Sacramento. What's up, Chava? Chilling. I wanted to um, just express a... a just like a little personal uh, mission I was on the last two weeks. There's a huge like fitted hat community. So like new era MLB make these hats and they hook them to Batman or Superman and the colors that Batman wears or like the Kanye West, whatnot. And this one hat came out of this Connecticut store. I don't, I forget if I had this conversation with you, Tony, I don't think I did. Um, but the hat uses a Diamondbacks, Arizona Diamondbacks snake. And they hooked it to the death of Selena, um, the Tejana singer. The snake is the serpiente. It's written in a script. And it's a real logo that the Diamondbacks use, serpientes. But the narrative that the creator made from this Connecticut Pro Image Sports was commemorating Yolanda, which was the murderer who was up for parole in 2025. Yeah. So I was so offended by this hat that I started to email corporate pyramid sports and they said that that's a franchise store. It's privately owned. They really have no say, but I said to them in argument of their, you know, we don't have any oversight of the privately owned franchise stores that it actually hit their, their corporate website. It's on their national nationwide website when it did release about three months ago, it's extremely offensive. So, they they didn't take it lightly. They said that they wanted it removed off the Instagram handle. Now it's already in the streets and circulating, and it's not on their website because it's sold out when it first released. It's like this hot, you know, they sell out within a couple of minutes. Yeah. These fitted hats, like a jersey or like a pair of shoes, right? And that's in this shoe game type thing. But there's such a lack of respect for the deceased victims' rights, especially our cultura. And so then you see podcasts where they have the hat on. And they're joking about it. This is the Yolanda. This is the one that stabs Felice in the back. And I took it to offense. And I called the dude out right on the podcast. I said, listen, that's extremely offensive. Take that off. And the other podcasters that were hosting the show said, I don't know about that, sir. Like, I don't think we agree with that. And the one dude just kept kind of going on. The Dominican man, Dominican American, Dominican Republic, I mean. And just, you know, did not take it serious. So I went on this mission the last two weeks, reaching out to these fitted hat stores. And um, I also 
reached out to Selena's estate to see if they would like to pursue this or get involved. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Right. But I just wanted to relay that to you guys and just get your guys feedback, I guess. Well, you know, let me ask you this. If you don't mind, what podcast was that? This was views from the vault and the episode is 136 at the five minute mark where one of the co-hosts jokingly mentions and kind of commemorates Yolanda, the murderer of Selena views from the vault episode 136 of um, upcoming drops. I think it is episode 136. Do you get that episode 136 views from the vault? You'll see one of the individuals with the Serpientes hat who, who basically makes a, a joke of the, the situation. Yeah, if I was subscribed to a podcast like that and they were making fun of a deceased person, you know what? I wouldn't fuck with those people anymore. Period. So, exactly. Uh, yeah, so, it turned me. On. It turned me off. It turned me off to the point where I'm, I'm done with that community there. You know. Yeah, yeah and, because if they can disrespect um, the deceased like that, bro, they they'll disrespect anyone. So. And that's where it's sticky. Like the 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 director and like the editor of that podcast were like closed lipped. One was like, I don't like that hat. He told the Vato, like, I don't like that hat at all. Let's not bring that up. And the one guy, the co host, just kinda just was, you know, just being a big payaso, you know, a big clown and didn't yeah. really understand the severity of it. So, you know, and I, I am an educator in a public school up here in Northern Califas and so I, I tend to to speak out and I like to, 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 you know, hit the pavement with these things and bring up the Mexican American war to students and, and tell them how that continuously affects us to this present day, 2023, you know, and things of that nature. But, you know, it sucks because people don't want to get involved and people are so hesitant. They say, well, you know, it's, I, you know, it's a, it's a creation, but I said, no, it's offensive. It's disgusting. And, you know, in this day and age, we can't hold the people accountable. We can, you know, like I emailed corporate and then I emailed Selena's estate and I reached out to all these other people in the West coast and said, be careful who you work with. A lot of these dudes are, are fake. They're clowns and that type of thing. So, you know, but it's like, it's so hard to, to get that accountability. Yeah. So, um, I just wanted to put that out there, you guys. You know, like the other caller said, let's support businesses that are in tune with our values as Chicanos and in tune with our, our morals and stuff like that. Like you said, Tony, don't support this podcast, right? And so I hear you, and that's it. All good. Did you have a question for Dr. David Sanchez at all, or was that was just a comment you wanted to share? That was just a comment I wanted to share. Um, question would be Dr. David Sanchez – um, Senor, the IG handle that's Brown Beret Califas is a legit handle, correct? Uh, there's the so IG many page. people calling themselves Brown Berets. Uh, uh, it's, it's okay. It's, 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 what I'm trying to say is, uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about. The main, the main one you got to keep uh, keep an eye on is mainly this shield. It's a cross and with the two cross rifles, which stands for discipline. And and this this is the okay. main shield. This is the main. This is the real McCoy. Since 1967, I would just like to say, since you're an educator, I'm thank you, thank you that for being an educator. We need to teach yes, Chicano intelligence. Okay, we need to teach Chicano intelligence with cosmic intelligence, and it's in this book. So you need to get this book to the students, and get this book to to the classrooms and other teachers, and get this book out to 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 the jail cells. And wherever Chicano is, they need to start reading about our unity and, and being prepared for the future uh, Chicano space age. I love it. And that was the Ch Chicano intelligence with the cosmic intelligence. Correct. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a blessed night. Okay, let's go. We're going to take one more call and then it's a wrap. So let's see who's going to be the, the next caller. Okay. Mm, that's it right here. Call it your name, or where are you calling from? It was the homie Kiki from the city of Escondido. What's up, Kiki? You're the last caller, my bro. What's up, guys? Um, when I want you to the good doctor, when I want you to uh, Mr. Marvelous over there. Yes. Um, everybody's aware of the phrase, uh, uh, prosperous, prosperous times create... Uh, 
weak men, weak men create hard times, hard times create strong men, strong men create prosperous times, correct? Um, I just wanted to get the doctor's take or he agrees that um, these times are creating a lot of weak men yes. for, the, uh, for the unification and for the fight of our struggle. The, ma- the, a, mass, the hit, mass chaos. Rata, correct? The mass chaos that's going on is making people go out there and, 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 and shooting people. Mass shootings is coming from mass uh, chaos and delusions. Uh, and so that's why we need to we need to make our rasa more stronger and more intelligent. Okay, so then this is this is pretty much my question right here, sir. Um, I'm going to give you my personal my personal belief. Um, for me, it is extremely hard to wrap my head around somebody who, for lack of a better word, is delusional. Like, I'm going to give you the exact word what I'm trying to get at. For example, the pronoun wars. The pronoun wars, have, have, I believe, have created greater division within our people. And for me, it is extremely hard to, uh, let's say, come in unison or come as one or come as a unit for the betterment of our people when the person next to me is... Uh, well, like I said, is delusional for lack of a better term, or is uh, more open or accepting to those types of ideals. Do 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 I make my myself clear? Yes. Yeah. So my question would be, in your in your opinion, in your professional opinion, um, is is the pronoun war something that's there to create further division between us, or is it just a, like a common misunderstanding here? Well, as long as there's no communication, there's misunderstanding. So you really have to let people know what you mean and to re- represent yourself because what you say represents you. Now, I, what do you say about common war, war or pro war? I'm not sure what you're saying. No, like 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 the pronoun war, sir. Like for example, like um, if somebody who is like fuck, I'm looking into it. For example, somebody who's like a biological male who identifies as a female or gender fluid or any type of those, you know, situations, <clears throat> but they want to be down for the movement. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I can't come to terms with a person who ideologically thinks like that. To me, in my opinion, that is a mental illness. Right. That is just flat out delusion. Yes, yes. It's, so, it's you know, mental. how how can... Hello? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to make sense to this. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Hello? Uh, yes, we're, we're, we're waiting, bro. No, no, no. Like, I'm, I was just trying to say if there's any type of to unify the rest or anybody who thinks like that, bro, because I've met some, I've met some individuals who want to be down for the movement and this and that, but... They're very open and receptive to those types of ideas. That was just that's just where I want to leave the question. Oh, right I see what you're saying. Yeah, well, the, the main issue is not yeah. is not delusional or, or you know gender or nothing like that. Our, the main issue is our survival, and we can only have that by our via our unity. Those are the main issues. Organizing our backyard, organizing groups, that is our survival, and we got to get back to that. All good, my bro. Okay. Yeah, thank you for your time. And uh, one more time, can you give us a shameless plug on that book you got right there on the desk, sir? Okay, I think he's got the information there. Yes, Chicano Universe. This is it right here. This is it. This this is taking 50 years of development, and it's right there just for you. Yep, there you go. Chicano uh, Universe Advanced Intelligence. Yeah, Chicano Universe Advanced Intelligence. It can be found on Amazon, or you can go to Rose Dog. Bookstore.com, rosedogbookstore.com. All right, thank you, Doctor, and uh, thank you once again for blessing the platform and fucking hitting us up with some knowledge. Thank you. Have a blessed one. Okay, that was it. All right, we can take these off. Dr. David Sanchez, thank you once again for taking the calls with us. Marvelous, thank you for taking the calls with us. 
Uh, um, really quick, before we give our shout-outs, do you guys have any, any Super Chats? Yes, yes, okay, go ahead. Okay, anytime now. All right, we have Super Chats. Uh, first up is Juan Jaramillo. Uh, how did he feel about Cesar Chavez? Oh, he already touched on that. He's yeah. uh, you, just really quickly. Yeah, you, know, you got along with the man. I, I know, I know. I see, he was a great man, okay. uh, and and he did teach us a, a little bit about nonviolence uh, to the Brown Braves, and that's why the Brown Braves survived. Because if you go out there and do some crazy stuff, you ain't gonna last. No, we 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 outlasted the system, and therefore we need to unite our people. Absolutely. All right, and uh, next up is uh, thirteen Lucky Charms. Uh, he he says. Dr. Sanchez, start a movement to change Elysian Park back to Chavez Ravine. Much respect to you, Tony, and Marvelous. That's right. All good. Thank you. And that is all. Okay, cool. Um, I thought I just saw the last one, or was that the last one? Yes, yes. That's okay, that that's right. All good. <clears throat> uh, Dr. David Sanchez, anything else that maybe one of the callers didn't ask you, anything else besides promoting your book, once again, Chicano Universe Advanced Intelligence, which is available at rosedogbookstore.com or on Amazon. You guys can get it there. Uh, anything else you care to touch on, sir? Just that, you know, we're celebrating. This is the 51st year for Catalina Island. Uh, the wonderful thing is that on Catalina Island at the museum, they put up a brown bear exhibit. Awesome. And there, you know, you have my uh, original uniform and some of the uniforms there. And you have the original flag that we flew, uh, a lot of videos. So, so if you ever get a chance, you know, come check it out. This year we're focusing on Catalina Island for many reasons. Also to create uh, more of a power base. But also we need more members uh, to join us with the Brown Bray National Party here in Los Angeles. Awesome. Marvelous. Anything you want to say? Anything, you know, maybe something that might have sparked an idea of a caller calling you and asking you something? Or, <laughs> um, I think that, that uh, how we're going to be united more is if we start critiquing um, on ideas that we think are educational or we think we know more than other people and, and generalizing um, certain eras of time that we think are more important than others. For instance, you know, the, the argument that I that or a conversation that I had with a, a certain individual that called in yeah. about the whole Spanish and the, how that's our language and my argument, how it's not our language. And, you know, the whole border thing, how this is still Mexica land. I still consider this Mexico, Mexico land. I don't care what anybody else says. I, I want to I think that it's important to know our origins from prior that from before the 18th century, 17th century, 16th century, you know, before Cortez. I think it's important to get back to the basics. People want to know about, oh, you know, about the indigenous people or the Azteca, the Mexica, the Maya, the Inca. And and if you went back to that time and you looked at their form of education, their form of education was, first of all, the substances that they're putting in their body, the food content. You know, that has a high frequency vibration that's going to live longer because if you're eating all the garbage of today, that's all processed food. How long are you going to be around to educate your seed? Not not very long, right? Not very long. That's going to take you out. The other thing is getting back to our our prayer that we used to have. That's taken away our vis our dream visions. Where do you think we got prophecy from from our visions? That's all been taken away. Nobody talks about their dreams anymore unless they're a nightmare. You know, and, and if that. What families gather in the morning to give a blessing and ask for protection on their seed? Nobody. Everybody's on their phone. Nobody's communicating, you know, handshake gestures, looking in a person's eye. No proper respect, etiquette, none of that. We've lost it. That's why I told this gentleman, doctor, you know, I, we, we lost all that. He's literally... One of the last, of, it's, 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 it's a blessing to run into somebody, yeah. uh, you know, like, man, how did, how did you conduct yourself back in the days? You know, stop, don't shut them, don't be so quick to shut somebody out. We're here to learn from everybody and anybody, you know. So the sooner we learn that and stop trying to critique each other on, on you know, who's the, who's the, the head of this or what head of that, we're going to get, we're, we'll be more progressive. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, go ahead, Norbert. Before I give my shout outs, all right. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Lisa for uh, giving us that emoji with the puppy clapping. 
Awesome, awesome. Uh, Dr. David Sanchez, any shout outs you want to give anybody you want to thank? Anybody you want to say hello to? Well, I'd like to thank, thank you, Tony, for having this show. Thank you, sir. Uh, I know sometimes your guests are controversial, but I understand you are focusing on the human element. Yes. And we need to make our human element more, uh, more uh, unified and create a, a unified picture of La Raza. Viva La Raza. Absolutely. Marvelous. Any shout outs? Um, to my babies, I love all you guys. Um, and thank you for having me here. Um, best meeting you and having a conversation, getting, getting to be here. This is you know, your time, but thank you for having me. Um, first and foremost, once again, I want to thank Dr. David Sanchez. Make sure you guys support his books. You can get them at rosedogbookstore.com or on Amazon. And once again, Chicano Universe Advanced Intelligence. Make sure you guys pick that up. Also, I want to thank Marvelous once again for, uh, uh, you know, kicking some knowledge with a lot of these phone calls. Also, I want to thank uh, Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise. Uh, he actually did my small today in the past. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, he does it legally or illegally. I'm only playing. Uh, also, I want to I want to give a shout out to Norbert uh, News of Norby's, or should I call him Taco Bell Norby's? But uh, also <laughs> to my son B Scanless, and to the Hip Hop Jedi. And uh, once again, uh, I'm gonna try to be at the Nam for all you guys that know what the Nam is on Saturday. I'll b probably be right there by the Pioneer Turntables on Saturday. See you guys at the Nam, and we're gonna put up a flyer right now. I just did an interview with Jr. and the crew. Jr. and the crew. Make sure you guys go check that out. I dropped some gems for you guys. You guys will be blessed by it. Um, other than that, um, oh yeah, become a member. We're a couple away from 100 members. Become a member, you will not be disappointed. I'm gonna be dropping a bunch of stuff that you that you guys are not gonna see on the regular channel, okay? So believe me, it's cheaper than buying a, a cup of coffee at Starbucks. So, and you only pay for it one time a month. So Starbucks, you guys pretty much buy every day. So other than that, have a blessed night. Once again, Dr. David Sanchez, Marvelous Inc. We out of here. Uh, see you guys probably tomorrow.
Let's move it on. 